I want to introduce you to the very best thing you could possibly be doing with your time. Cubing. I am obsessed with cube design. And today I hope to pass on that happy condition to you as well. Welcome to Cultic Cube, where we cube religiously. We make you better at cube and make your cube better. One of the great things about cube is that it is whatever you want it to be. Your job as designer is to make the cube your own and to make it awesome. What people generally mean by the term cube is a singleton draft environment with 360 or more cards. If that sounds more or less like any magic set that has been designed for limited play, well, it is. With Cube, you create your own set. You manifest the world that you want to inhabit, one that is fun and balanced and whose every card serves a purpose. I think Cube is the perfect way to experience magic. I'd like to share with you why I design and play cubes. I will address the obstacles I have faced along the way and how to overcome them. As we proceed, I will highlight resources that will help your cube design adventure, all of which are linked in the video description. Cultic Cube is supported by you. Please drop by my Patreon page and learn about me and about perks for patrons. I'm a TCG affiliate as well, and when you follow the link in the video description and make your purchase, I will receive a small commission at no cost to you. My sincere thanks for your support. I asked on Twitter, Reddit, and Discord what you all love about Cube. Your responses are wonderful and moving. Examining these remarks as a word cloud foregrounds you all's values of friendship, community, and creativity. I will quote some of your thoughtful comments as we go along. One of the things that I love most about Cube is that it allows us to be game designers. You already know how much fun it is to play Cube and to draft in general. If you are like me, half the fun of Limited lies in assembling decks that are both novel and successful. Cube design engages that inventive process on a still grander scale. Envision an environment, assemble it, test it, and iterate on it. Do you want to resolve powerful spells from across the history of magic and discover exciting new interactions among them? Do you just love the morph mechanic and want to foster games of bluffing and deduction? Do you wax nostalgic for Rise of the Eldrazi Draft and want to recreate and improve on that experience? Your cube is your own world to build, to explore, and to introduce to others. Another thing that I love about Cube is that it brings people together, and it brings magic to people. With Cube, you supply your players with the tools to express themselves as deck designers, and to make discoveries that may surprise even you. Thus it provides an occasion to gather friends, and to share in a deep gaming experience that requires no supplies other than the Cube itself. It feels amazing to facilitate others' enjoyment and creativity. I also simply like drafting a well-designed cube better than the average set. I do not mean that I appreciate only high-octane environments. A great cube can absolutely be still lower power than retail draft environments. For me, cube is the superior experience because cube is designed entirely for limited play and not for constructed formats. Thus, no one has to worry about cards or combos that might break standard. Still more importantly, a cube can, and should, be entirely free from draft chaff, narrow sideboard cards, unplayable rares or unbeatable mythics, and so on. It is often said, and it is generally true, that to cube is to draft a constructed deck. The cube deck feels viscerally different from the retail booster draft deck, as the pool from which the former draws tends to be flatter in power level, richer in playables, and more single-mindedly focused on limited gameplay. Moreover, Cube can be a legacy. It provides an opportunity to shuffle up and to show off those beloved cards that might otherwise sit silent in binders or boxes. Many people treat Cube as a museum of magic that surveys the game's history and one's history with the game. Also, designers love to showcase beautiful altars, special promos, signed cards, and so on. Cube is a draft environment that you can keep forever, ready to be enjoyed at a moment's notice. We all know how expensive our hobby can be. Not everyone can afford to go to F&Ms regularly for booster draft. And if you want to relive favorite formats of the past, well, buying a booster box of Innistrad is going to cost you a fortune. Your Innistrad cube, though, you will be able to draft at will and at no cost after the initial investment. The upfront cost of a cube can seem off-putting, especially if one equates cube in general with an MTGO vintage cube. However, cube is whatever you want it to be. There are plenty of examples of great pauper and peasant cubes, such as Usman Jamil's and Adam Staborski's. 
but one need not necessarily limit oneself to commons and uncommons to keep costs low. The hosts of the Solely Singleton podcast rely on rares from the bulk bin to fill out their board game cube, which costs 100 US dollars to assemble. Those of us with even middling magic collections need not necessarily buy any product at all. I started my first cube by dragging a box of cards out of my closet. I took a deep breath and fanned out the cards on my living room floor, feeling as if I was an adept of the cardboard occult. More than half of the cards in that cube were from Innistrad block, as those were the sets I had drafted the most and most enjoyed drafting. I did not purchase any cards for that cube, yet it was a blast to play, and it got me hooked on cube design. Cube with what you have at hand. In those earliest days of my cube, I used spreadsheets to stay organized. The documents were laborious to update, provided little information about the cards, supplied a poor overview of the environment, and were not readily shareable. Thankfully, we have better options now. I use a free website called Cube Cobra that addresses all of those erstwhile limitations. Cube Cobra allows one to create and manage one's cube easily, to visualize the cube using card images or lists, to map out casting costs and categories of spells, to compare one's cube with others, to maintain a change log and blog posts, to draft the cube against bots, and so on. The very idea of keeping up with a library of hundreds of cards used to be headache-inducing, but it no longer need be. I faced an impediment to cube play that I'm sure many share, which is that after I moved to a new city, I lost my playgroup and I had only a few friends with whom to cube. You can have a rewarding cube experience with a limited number of players. In fact, there are a surprising number of methods people have devised for two-person cube play. The most popular include sealed and grid draft. My friend Matt of the Cube for Two video channel has an excellent primer on his favorite method called pancake draft. There are plenty of guides available for drafting with fewer than eight people. Finally, you may be feeling overwhelmed at the prospect of getting a cube off the ground. Today more than ever, there are many great resources to help you on your way. As I was getting started, I devoured articles by people such as Usman Jamil, Tom Lapilli, and Jason Waddell. Turn One Magic has written the definitive introduction to cube as far as I am concerned. There are lively fora for discussion that tend to root themselves in different cube philosophies. Cube Design boasts excellent podcasts and entire YouTube channels. I supply annotated links to a host of resources in the video description. And if taking a deep dive into cube curation still sounds like work, then I encourage you to go check out a cube list. Copy it wholesale if you like, or take some time to tease it apart and understand the logic that animates its design. Cube is about having fun. Embrace it. Make it your own. Craft an environment that allows you to create memorable experiences with friends. Feel free to get in touch with me via Twitter or email. Honestly, there's little I like better than talking about Cube. Check out my channel for more Cube theory, such as my video about designing multicolored sections. If you find this content valuable, consider joining my Patreon community. Let's keep hanging out and chatting Cube.